heartbreaking. Former U.S. Marine who exposed Hillary found dead. Hillary Clinton's body count continues to accumulate, most recently at an accelerated rate it seems over the past two months as President Donald Trump closes in on her freedom. We already know that nobody is off-limits as the butcher of Benghazi has proven just how far she is willing to go in order to protect herself. America's heroes are collateral damage in the trail of secrets that Hillary is desperate to keep hidden as we saw in Benghazi and are seeing now again with the sudden death of a former Marine. It has now become clear that the Clintons have stepped up their Vitalantics to the most alarming level of depravity yet and this time went way too far. The not-so-coincidental sudden deaths of people that found themselves with information on the Clintons or somehow in Hillary's crosshairs, cannot be overlooked any longer. She operates under the philosophy that dead men don't talk and has a list of people she's now silenced forever. James Dolan was one of the unfortunate souls to find himself murdered, after he worked as a WikiLeaks collaborator and co-created the technology that allowed WikiLeaks to obtain and publish the leaked DNC and Podesta emails. Perhaps you could say that this 36-year-old's cause of death was simply trying to expose the truth, although the coroner is calling it something else. Freedom of the Press Association reports. It was with an extremely heavy heart that we recently learned our friend and former colleague James Dolan, one of the co-creators of Secure Drop and Freedom of the Press Foundation's first full-time employee, took his own life over the holidays. He was 36. In 2012, James worked with Aaron Swartz and journalist Kevin Powelson to build the original prototype of Secure Drop the open-source whistleblower submission system, which was then called Dead Drop. Palestine described James's role in the project's creation in The New Yorker in 2013. In New York, a computer security expert named James Dolan persuaded a trio of his industry colleagues to meet with Aaron to review the architecture and, later, the code. We wanted to be reasonably confident that the system wouldn't be compromised, and that sources would be able to submit documents anonymously so that even the media outlets receiving the materials wouldn't be able to tell the government where they came from. James wrote an obsessively detailed step-by-step -step security guide for organizations implementing the code. He goes a little overboard, Aaron said in an email, but maybe that's not a bad thing. Beyond a couple references on our website, that New Yorker story is virtually all that is in the public domain about James's involvement in the project, and that's how he preferred it. James was an intensely private and modest person, and despite the fact the secure drop soon got a lot of attention when Freedom of the Press Foundation, FPF, took the project over, he constantly insisted that Aaron deserved all the credit. Interestingly, Dolan's death comes exactly five years after Swartz's supposed suicide which occurred at a very questionable time considering he was facing prosecution from the U.S. government. Freedom of the Press explains. In January 2013, Aaron Swartz himself committed suicide as the U.S. government was attempting to prosecute him for violating the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act related to allegedly copying academic articles from Gister. Secure Drop was an unrelated side project he was working on at the time. A few months after Aaron's tragic death, Kevin Powelson donated the Secure Drop project to FPF in the hopes that we could revive it and get it in a place where more news organizations could use it. At that point, James was literally the only person in the world who knew all the ins and outs of the system, how to install it, and how to make it better. He had a high-paying computer security job at a large company by then, but I asked him if he'd be willing to come work for us so we could try to get secure drop into more newsrooms. We had hardly any money at the time. Yet he immediately agreed, even though it meant taking an 80% pay cut. Later, he would even refuse to accept the raise, insisting that we use any new funding to hire additional people to work on the project instead. Even the people who worked closely with James are perplexed by the news of him taking his own life so suddenly. Since he was a former Marine, some are saying he suffered PTSD and this was the fatal result of that condition. However, it does not sound like there were any indicators in behavior leading up to this tragic turn of events, other than his key involvement with making top-secret information shareable. It's really hard to believe in consequences since to do so, 
one would have to ignore the glaring facts. Both Aaron and James committed suicide after being persecuted by U.S. prosecutors. They deserve justice after having died at such young ages. Two more in the long list of coincidental deaths. deaths.